Hello everyone, happy Monday, and welcome to another week and another episode of Quadris and Sundries. I hope everyone had a great weekend and a great Thanksgiving. Recently over the last two years, I remember how the internet went crazy over Jeff Bezos being worth $200 million, a remarkable feat in American history. But I recently was curious as to what the wealthiest person in human history was, not just America. <clears throat> and it's not Jeff Bezos. So I thought, let's dive into that and see who the wealthiest man to ever live was. Well, talking about the wealthiest people alive, a problem arises. Because there have been many kings and queens, emperors and conquerors. And as economies and civilizations change, inflation becomes a major factor in calculating wealth. And the farther back we go, the harder it becomes, especially before the common era, to determine someone's wealth. Two men I have are currently tied for the wealthiest to ever live. The 13th century Mali emperor, Mansa Musa, and the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustine, who lived from 63 BC to 14 AD. Now, when you look at their wealth, Mansa Musa in modern-day U.S. currency has a wealth of $400 billion, while Caesar has a worth of $4.6 trillion. Now, I know what you're saying. That's not exactly tied. Caesar clearly is more wealthy. Well, like I said earlier, it's harder to calculate wealth before the Common Era, especially when you're dealing with pharaohs and emperors, whose very breath would shake the world economy in a time well, there were not many civilizations, and there really wasn't a world economy. Caesar was not just a Roman Empire. He also owned most of Egypt, a powerful nation and civilization at the current time. So we can't accurately calculate his actual wealth. Before we talk about Mansa Musa, let me drive the point home on how hard antiquity wealth is to calculate. Alexander the Great the Macedonian ruler during the 3rd century BC who owned more land than any ruler in human history is actually known as the wealthiest human to ever live. But we don't actually know how much he's actually worth. We can't actually calculate it. Some people put it at 500 billion, but some say it's 100 times that. We can't actually calculate it, especially at a time with no centralized banking or centralized world economy. Now let's talk about Mansa Musa. I want to talk about him because he is quite fascinating. Born in the year 1280 and died in the year 1337, he was a devout Muslim, expanding Mali's borders and enriching his economy. In my eyes, one of the greatest feats this Mali king accomplished was his dedication to education. After his return from his great pilgrimage, which I will talk about in a little bit, he got to work making the capital of Mali, Timbuktu, into the center of trade and culture in the Islamic world. And under his leadership, he took the local university of Sankor and staffed it with scholars, astronomers, mathematicians, and jurists from around the globe to make Sankor the center of education for the world at the time. During Mansa Musa's reign, the university could house at least 30,000 people and housed over a million different manuscripts from around the globe, ten times that of the famous Library of Alexandria, even at its high point. The university still remained an educational center till its closure in 1591, when Morocco invaded Mali, destroyed the scrolls, and stripped all scholars of their titles. A really sad feat. I would have loved to see how great this university is. Actually, it's still standing today, but it's closed. But it's a great historical site. I'd love to visit one of these days. Still quite the monumental feat. Now let's talk about the Great Pilgrimage. But before we get back in your regular scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content, and if you're listening on YouTube, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Because at least 60% of the people who listen aren't subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it to help this channel grow. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, 
or whatever audio platform you're listening to this on, consider giving me a follow. And any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's get right back into the rest of the episode. Being that Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim, during the year 1324, he began the trek to Mecca, a duty all Muslims must take once in their life. But he didn't come alone. Along this 2,700 mile or 4,345 kilometer trek, he was accompanied by 60,000 men, all adorned in silk, 12,000 slave, slaves each carrying 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms in gold, soldiers adorned in silk while carrying gold staffs, and at least 80 camels each carrying between 50 to 300 pounds of gold or 23 to 136 kilograms. If I calculated based on today's, and I mean today, Monday, November 29th, average gold price, the slaves alone would be carrying about $100 million worth of gold. And the camels, anywhere between $1 million and $50 million worth of gold. However, I don't know the numbers of what else he was carrying and the worth of the silk and the gold staffs, and who knows what he left at home. But still, this is a lot of wealth to bring with you. But, unlike you would expect with most rulers of his caliber, he wasn't flaunting his wealth and being stingy. He would give gold, gold bars, just out to the poor he passed on the street on his journey. He would flood the economies of the cities and towns he passed with gold. His path was also lined with mosques, because he had his slave build a mosque every Friday for him to pray, allowing grand places of worship, even in the smallest towns. However, it came at a cost, because upon passing through Egypt, he bought so many souvenirs, gave away so much gold, that in the cities of Medina... Mecca, and Cairo, they all had a 10-year recession with all the influx of gold. The price for metal became so inflated that it bankrupted cities and towns and major economy sectors. But the historians have a theory. Although he was kind and generous, he was extremely kind and generous. His spending, though, could have been a ploy to bankrupt some of the most important cities for trade in the Mediterranean so as to make Timbuktu the center of trade, bolstering his own economy. Whether that's true or not, whether it worked, Timbuktu ended up becoming the center for trade while Mansa Musa was alive. Well, Mansa Musa will probably be surpassed as the richest man alive within the next 10 or 20 years by, I'll say, it's either Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. The impact Mansa Musa had in a time when the world was ruled by kings and emperors is undeniable. And even if his record is surpassed, there will never come close to this great man. Also, I just want to say if you want to learn more about Mansa Musa, I would highly recommend the YouTube series Puppet Histories episode on Mansa Musa. And also, Epic Rap Battles of History's battle between Mansa Musa and Jeff Bezos. I found it extremely fascinating, and over the last 10 years, I've always found the series a great way to educate the youth, especially those that love rap, and to teach them history. If you're watching the YouTube version, I will leave their links in the description. Before I go, I want to get some business out of the way. The holidays are coming up, so starting Wednesday, December the 1st, I'll be starting what I'm calling the Happy Holidays Month at Quandries and Sundries. It will be 14 days of celebrating December and winter tradi traditions from around the globe. So I hope you look forward to that. I certainly am. Well, that is all I got for today. I want to thank you again for listening. I would love to know what you think and how I can improve the show. After all, I do this all for you. So head over to my social media or just the comments if you're watching the YouTube version and let me know. Thanks so much, and do not forget to share this to anyone or all those in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for another episode of Quandries and Sundries. This is Van Masterson, signing off. Till next time.